Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is currently 1.31 a.m. on this brisk, I think brisk is a good adjective to describe tonight. Rainy, wet, Friday evening going into Saturday. It is currently 49 degrees outside. You know, it's been about 49 degrees all day today, 48, 49. It was cold today. And uh, my winter coat is in the back. I had to wear my winter coat today. But I knew that I would turn on the heat in here and it would get toasty warm. So it's that time of year again when I go to vlog <laughs> that when I come out to my car, once I get my car like warmed up, um, you know, I don't have my seat heater on today, but I have it. Like Alex put his on the other day, so I put mine on. It's like that time of year again that once I get the seat heater on and the heat going inside the car and I have my drink for the evening, whether that's coffee or water, I have a, either uh, my leftover Starbucks coffee today, um, or whatever that is that I feel like, I feel safe in here, you know, like I feel safe at that serial killers are out there trying to get everybody and this is or, or, or zombies or zombies and this is my own personal uh, <laughs> Mission mobile in the zombie apocalypse. Do you ever like <laughs> that's called the imagination of being an only child anyway um, First of all, I just want to say a, a overwhelming thank you to all of the really compassionate, supportive comments from the vlog from yesterday. I haven't read all of them yet, but I went in and I started reading um, quite a few of them earlier in the day after I posted the vlog, like an hour after that. And I just wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and I know that this is gonna be like a really hard thing to go through and this is, you know, I was talking to Tanya about it today and like I talked to her about it yesterday too, and it's just like this is you know part of life. Um, and I think the hardest thing right now is knowing that I I, I just like I'm bar I know I'm borrowing trouble. And somebody said this on there, and this was such a great comment. They said I'm only saying this because this is the advice she would give us. But like, don't borrow trouble. You know, I think the hard thing for me is that like Tucker is. Like, he seems so good right now. Like, he's just very playful and, you know, sits there and looks at me with his little tongue out of his mouth. And he seems very healthy, you know. Tonight, I took a nap with him. Alex had gone over and done some things at a friend's house and then went to another friend's house. Um, and so, I was at home and um, I took a nap with them. And I just got up, like, 20 minutes ago. And when I got up, I was, like, in the bathroom brushing my teeth. And Tucker coughed, I think, like three times. But other than that, he hasn't coughed really in the last two to three days. So my fear is, this is my big fear because this is also how it was with PP, pee -pee. and I think that this is how it is with congestive heart congestive heart failure, which is the diagnosis and heart disease, is that it takes like a turn very quickly, um, and you don't know when that's going to be, and so that scares the hell out of me, right? Like I don't no, do we have, I mean, is it going to be bad in a month? Is it going to be bad in six months? You know? Um, and whereas before, like she said, I would like to, you know, I think like, let's see if he can make it to a year and a half. I kind of had that in my head, you know? But like now I'm like every moment I like feel like is my last moment that I'm living with the little guy and he doesn't even appear sick, you know? So it's just, it's, even though it's the same situation, it, it feels different in some ways. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Um, so there's that. But I want to say, like I said, I need to bring another one of these lip balms out. I can't believe with all the lip balm that I have in the world in my house, that the one lip balm that I have in my bag is this dead lip balm that is like, it is, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's like, you know where the hard part of the lip balm comes up? I mean, I've like used this to the very bitter end. Um, with all these lip balms that I've purchased through the years and been gifted. But anyway, I just wanna say thank you so much for the support. It, it really, really means a lot to me and is very needed right now. Um, and I appreciate it. Tonight was really hard. Alex, I think he associates the the group, or the, the 
Rufus DeSoul a lot with, because he did this whole like video for himself about Pee Pee to the song Treat You Better. And like he would kind of play that a lot at the end when Pee Pee was really sick. And so Rufus DeSoul put out a new album and Alex tonight was like heating up some food before he left. And I was like doing, doing some stuff. Oh, I just come home and like I walked into the kitchen and he was just like bawling. And he had texted me and he said, I just, I, I love our dog so much. Like, you know, and, and I walked in the kitchen and he just was like a mess. And, and we're kind of like, it's like what he is, I'm not kind of off and on, you know? Um, so I didn't get a chance to talk to the vet today, but she did call me. But when I called back, she was in an appointment, but I was really just talking to her about the blood work and whatever. And the she left me a very long message um, our vet it was back today. I thought she got back next week, but she was back today. And she said, you know, I understand that you wanted to talk to me instead. And I totally understand that. And she was like, um, unfortunately, I agree with the diagnosis based on the blood work and what I saw from the ectocardiogram. And she was like, I think that we should move forward on the medication and start that treatment. And then when you bring Tucker in here next week for his heart x-ray, we can, um, we can make further decisions at that time to see like, you know, like whatever. So I guess next week when I go in there, I'm going in on Thursday. Um, Alex is going to meet me. He's going to get off work at that. He's going to go into work, but come over and meet me so that we can both be there for that. Um, and have that appointment. I guess she'll tell us more of like, you know, where she thinks we're at or what she, you know, what, what she thinks the prognosis is or whatever. I just feel like it's a, I feel like based on what the other vet said, that whatever they're seeing on this ectocardiogram or whatever is worse than like what it seems like because she seemed like extremely concerned about it to me. Um, so anyway, yeah. So that was at the end of the day, they were getting the medicine ready and then they had to call in one of the meds to a pharmacy because he's going to be on three meds. So, um, she, um, so tomorrow we have to pick that up and then, um, the other one we can get when the pharmacy calls us. The other thing is, um, but you know what, the pharmacy, I don't know for, like they didn't call me today, which means we're gonna probably have to, anyway. Um, but the Lasix injection that she gave him the other day, I don't know if I mentioned that, but the vet gave him a Lasix injection to start. Like it's already taking effect. Like it's, little Tucker is so thirsty. He like drinks water like the, all day long and I've been taking him out a lot, but he's, he already had an accident inside and he was, I, it was so weird because like he was so embarrassed by it and Tucker's like not a dog that like, he like, is, all of our dogs have always behaved so well other than barking, <laughs> but like I could tell he was like really embarrassed about it. Like he caught himself and then he just kind of stopped like what, I think it even surprised him that he was like peeing, just like standing there, you know? and. Um, and he just kind of looked up at me and I said, sweetie, it's okay. And I started, I started crying and I was like, I don't care where you pee. <laughs> you know, you've like <laughs> given your life over to talks when you say that, you know what I mean? I don't though, you know, it's like, I don't care how bad it sounds. I'd have pee pee back. Even if that meant he peed on everything, you know what I mean? Like, I don't care. I just want my dog. But anyway, Boo is completely oblivious to all of it, he seems like. he. I can tell he senses something is going on, but like he can't really figure out what it is, you know? So anyway, my day, my day was good today, other than that. I got up and, um, well, I finished last, was it last night I finished? Yeah. Uh, 
The Whisper Man by Alex North. You guys, it was really, really good. I, I don't know that I would say it was one of the scariest books I've ever read, but as far as, like, a heart-thumping uh, thriller, it definitely was. Um, one of the best thrillers I've ever read. And... Yeah, it was really, really good. I, so I gave it four stars. So my new rating chart is one star is poor. I got this off of some woman on Goodreads, and I really liked this. One star is good or poor. Two stars is good. No, one star is poor. Two stars is okay. Three stars is good. Four stars is great. And five stars is amazing. Um, like, off the charts, you know? And, um... So, I gave it four stars, just because it wasn't, like... There was no, like, profound learning experience from it or anything like that. But I will tell you, I liked it so much that I bought his next book out. Which I think it's called The Shadows. And I'm gonna listen to it after I'm done listening. I was gonna listen to a head full of ghosts. But I think I'm gonna listen to it after I'm done listening to this book right now. Which I actually wanted to drive around and finish today earlier. But I ended up getting so caught up, like, doing video stuff at home. Um, so I went... So I finished that book last night. And then I also started... But, like, I only got, like, ten minutes into it. Listening to uh, The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. It is her second horror young adult novel. I, I don't love it so far, I will tell you that. Her first one was uh, someone's... There's someone inside your house, which they just made into a Netflix movie, which I thought the book and the movie were both good um, in their, on their own account, on their own ways. Um, I didn't think the movie was a lot like the book, but I thought they were both good. Alex and I watched the movie last weekend. Um, but I thought they were own good. They were both, I thought they were both good, like, in their own way. Um, but like I said, I... This one is about these two girls that go camping, and I'm like an hour, I'm like almost two hours in, I'm like at two hours in it, and it's only seven hours, seven hours and nine minutes, and I'm like at two hours and nine minutes, and um, it's just a lot of kind of silly dialogue between these two girls, and they're, they just graduated from high school, and they're getting ready to go to college, and they're not going to see each other. Um, anymore, and so this is like their last, they've, they've never really been that wild when they were like in high school, and so this is like their thing to go try, and, but it's a lot of talk about bears, and like they're afraid of there being bears in the woods, and you know it's not going to be about bears, you know it's going to be about, because now they're talking about serial killers, it's actually interesting because they just referenced Israel Keys, and how he had these uh, kill kits all over set up all over the United States. And I was like, that's really interesting that Israel Keys is mentioned in a young adult book. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I, when I was looking at the ratings, I had already bought it on Audible because I like There's Someone Inside Your House, but it got like three point something star rating. And I was like, this is like overall. You, I, I can't really ever tell from Goodreads like what I think I'm gonna like if the book's gonna be good, but if it's over four stars, typically I'm gonna enjoy the listen on some level. You know what I mean? If it's three something, that usually means it's just okay. And I have I rarely have seen a book over there that's two star something. Um, so anyway, this was like three point six or three point eight. I mean, it didn't get high ratings at all in the reviews. I don't think I didn't read any of them, but I'm. I, <laughs> Did I read a couple of them? Maybe I did, and that's where I got the impression going into it that it wasn't good. I don't know. But, um, so there's that. And then, got up today, and Alex went into work late today. And then I went, and I did some stuff around the house, started getting the vlog ready. And then I went to do this review of Dunkin' Donuts versus Starbucks coffee. And, um... There's a Dunkin' Donuts that's, like, right next to Starbucks. Well, not right next to it, but it's, like, in the same kind of, like, strip mall area. But that Starbucks was already closed for the day. And then the next Starbucks that I went to was closed for the day. So, I had to go across the street to Target. So, I went inside to Target, which there was actually, like, a long line at that Starbucks. They were, like, super busy. People were so nice that worked there. Um, and I got a, co a coffee, which is what I'm drinking right now. 
But I do prefer Dunkin' Donuts coffee over Starbucks, just like for a regular cup of coffee. Um, and then I was listening to my audiobook. I feel like I talked to somebody on the phone then. I can't remember. Oh, I talked to Valerie on the phone for a little while. And she was real excited because she was going to a wedding this weekend. And then, so have fun at the, the wedding, Valerie. <laughs> she was telling me what she was wearing and stuff. And then um, I came home and I, by that time I think like Alex was home. Alex is going to a birthday thing tomorrow. He has like a, his friend's birthday is tomorrow night. This is like a friend that I'm not close with that, um, she was, so Alex, so he used to, when I, um, well, when Alex was in high school, he danced for the Fever, which is, uh, the women's basketball team in Indianapolis. And so he was like, you know how like professional, um, uh, athletic teams have like cheerleaders, dancers, things like that. So he danced for the Fever. He, I can't remember what they were called, but he was like one of the dancers. He did that all through high school. That was like his part-time job that he did. He got paid for it, salary, did show up for performances and other things and everything like that. So um, I remember when we first talked about it and I was like, so because he said my job in high school, like this was a job that I had in high school. I said, you got paid for that? He was like, Oh, yeah. He was like, I had a good salary from that in high school. He was like, my friends were jealous. So, he did that when he was in high school. But, like, so since he did that, like, Alex has known, like, so many of, like, the uh, Colts cheerleaders through the years. Um, the pacemates. He, he knows, like, every pacemate that has ever danced for the Pacers, Indianapolis Pacers. But, um... Mostly, it's because he was really, really, he's really good friends with who was the captain for like 10 years. And so all the girls that have been on the team, he's known for years. So one of them, it's their birthday tomorrow night. And I'm not like really good friends with that whole group. And so he is, and um, he's really, a lot of them. So then after he got done, when I met Alex, he was part of this um, dance group. I used to call it a troupe and he would be like, it's not, I don't know what you're talking about, but it's not a dance. He, he, I think even when I said dance group, he would get mad, but it was called Entourage. And they were a hip hop dance group. And it was led by this woman who, she had like a dance school. I don't even think she lives in Indiana anymore, but she had like a really popular dance school. I mean, it was like grades, like first through like college. And then she had, but like first through high school mostly. And then it was like all these kids. Um, I think that was a fox that just ran into the woods. And then she had, um, like adult classes too. Like she, I can remember I went to the rehearsal, like I went to the, not the rehearsal, did the, what do you call it? The, um, recital that they did, which was really fun. So it was like going to like a dance mom's recital. But then, um, I mean, she had girls that were like 10 years old that were like, I mean, they were hip hop dancers like nobody's business. So the majority of it was hip hop dancing. But she had these girls that were hip hop dancers that were like these two that were like nobody's business. I mean they were so good. But anyway, then she did like an adult Zumba class because they came out and they did like this performance. It was like five minutes of them just doing Zumba like on stage. And I loved it so much and I thought I wanted to do Zumba. But anyway, so Alex was part of this group for like the first two years, three years that we were together. And then it kind of dissolved. Um, but he loved that. He would do that every Monday night. They would have rehearsal and it was for like three hours, three or four hours. He loved it. Um, was it longer than that that he was in that group at the beginning? So funny how much our life has changed since we first got together. Like so many of the things that we did. But I mean, there are like certain meetings that I went to back then that like I haven't been to in a couple years because I, you guys, I have not had a, a, a jolt of like, um, what do you call it? Like, I don't know how to explain it. I haven't had a jolt of, um, <laughs> anxiety go through me. Not anxiety, but what's the word I'm looking at? Like fear go through me. I just was sitting here talking about how I had changed up my meeting, uh, my meetings in the last couple years. And I just sat there and I, I like, like three times in a row said the name of my home group, which is real. I mean, I'm sure anybody could figure it out, but, um, but anyway, I said it like three times. I was like, oh my God. So anyway, um, but you know, like I've switched up my meetings a lot, but um, 
I don't really ever like mention other days or nights that I go to video or that I go to videos that I go to meetings um, because I have had a couple people show up at meetings through the years, which is fine. It's the people that it's they've always been appropriate and they've always been really really nice, but they've been like, oh, I heard you talk about. And I figured out what meeting that you go to on your whatever. So I mean, I've talked about that meeting on Tuesday nights forever, but my other meetings I don't mention anymore just because you know it's anonymous for me and. I like to go and have my anonymity as well, or anonymity as well, anonymity. I like to go and have my anonymity as well, but, um, so, <laughs> I can remember the first time that it happened. It was, the, she was really, really, really sweet, and, um, but, like, I met her through her sponsor, and her sponsor had no idea that I made videos or anything. And so she was like trying to explain to her like what I did, but anyway. So, uh, but yeah. So that's why I don't talk like, I'll say like a recovery commitment or whatever, but like I don't really say like on this night I go to meetings and on that night I go to meetings and on this night um, I go to a lot of meetings or where I go during the day and things like that, but I just don't say it on what nights anymore um, or what times. Although there was a period a couple years ago when I was going to, I was doing all candlelight meetings and I was going to meetings Sunday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday. I was going to six meetings a week. Um, and I was chairing two of those meetings. And I had two service positions. I was so busy. And I loved it. But then I talked to my sponsor, my old sponsor. I ran into him. And <clears throat> that was at a period where, like, Alex and I were in the middle of marriage counseling. And, like, things were getting better um, and all of that. And, you know, my sponsor said to me, we get sober to be, like, not to just, like, hang out in a meeting all day long. Like, when you've gotten sober and you've established a foundation of sobriety, like... It's time to apply that to your life and be a better husband, be a better son, be a better, you know, friend, worker, nephew, whatever, and apply that. And so I cut down my meetings a little bit and changed completely my meetings up and I got a new sponsor and, um, and I feel like I have like the, the perfect balance now of, um, I mean, I don't think I have the perfect balance. It's funny whenever I say, talk about balance. Anyway, I feel like I have an appropriate balance for of meetings and where like sponsor stuff and my and service work in my life right now. Um, so my second sponsor, this is how I actually got him. We, I was at a meeting and I knew him because I had just started working with his wife. So I was at the time um, about, well, I started working there in May. So um, I was about, there's, there were deer over there. There was like a, like two or three deer over there. There's all kinds of animals out tonight. Um, I started working there uh, May 5th. So I got sober December 17th. I started there as a volunteer and then I started working there um, once I hit like the six month mark. So around that time is when I met his wife and I was working with another sponsor. That was my first sponsor that I was working with that I did not love. And um, I lo she was a counselor and I just started as uh, working as a tech. And I just adored her, and she was goofy and strange and different, but very, very real. A very real. And um, she had kind of a cool story. So she had been a um, cocaine dealer, and she had been with a cocaine dealer, and she uh, got arrested and ended up. Um, 
incarcerated, pregnant, sobering up, and she ended up having her um, baby incarcerated like two months before she got, like a month before she got out or like a month, two months before she got out. So, I don't know how it worked at that time, but her family um, held on to, God, I wonder how old her daughter is now. So, she was like four or five when I met her, and I'm 26 years sober. She's going to be, she's like 30. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That makes me feel so old. So, anyway, but she, um, so her family, like her, her mom and dad, like, raised her daughter for, like, the two months until she got out, and then she, like, lived with them, and whatever, um, and then she met her then-husband, who was my sponsor, after she got out, she met him in meetings, and, um, he, he was kind of one of these guys that, He'd get a couple years and then he'd go back out again. He'd get a couple years and he'd go back out again. And his drug of choice was speedballs, heroin and cocaine. And um, he had a lot of health complications as a result of it. And, um, man, he had crazy stories. I mean, he had crazy stories. When I did my fifth step with him, which is where you, like, share your fourth step, which is making a search and a fearless moral inventory of our lives, when I shared these things with him that I was so ashamed of, so embarrassed of, so just couldn't believe, you know, that I were part of my life, like, everything I shared with him, he would share something worse so that I didn't feel better. And he'd say, see, you're not alone. He was such a fantastic man. And he's really who helped lay the foundation of my sobriety. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. So anyway... I don't know how it happened. He and I started going to, um, well, it was my job to take some of the patients to meetings. And so I took them to this meeting that ended up becoming my home group at that time, which was this Wednesday night group. It no longer exists, so I can say the name of this, the name. I can say the name. It, it closed down 24 years ago, or 20, 22 years ago. Um, it was called Surrender to Win. And, um, <laughs> It was inside Charter Hospital, which is also closed now, and um, which is a psychiatric dual diagnosis hospital treatment facility. That's not where I worked, but it was anyway. Um, so I would take patients there, and I he would be there, and I knew him because I you know knew him through her. Because when I would go to meetings, and I would see them on the weekends and stuff at meetings, right? And I really liked him. And um, I had this sponsor that was just kind of the sponsor that my counselor had given me when I got out of treatment. But I I can't believe that I just did this again. But I just said my first sponsor's name. Anyway, um, God love him. I have no idea where he's at. I haven't seen him in years and years and years and years. And you know what the craziest thing is? I think if I saw him right now and he walked up to me, I would still like, if he still looked the same. We were similar in age. I mean, not super close in age, but like. If I was 22 and a half when I got sober, he was probably 27, 26. And I think he had been a patient that had gone through the treatment center because my my counselor, like, gave him to me. But she, we just never, like, we never got that close. And um, so, anyway, we just never got that close. And he really didn't push me that hard to, like, do work and stuff like that. I think in retrospect, I'm not really sure, like, you know, sometimes, like, People that aren't led by sponsors who know, like my sponsor today, like she knows, she knows the text. She knows the auxiliary books. Like she knows how to work steps. Like she has gone to hundreds of conferences, hundreds of workshops. She has sat and spoken. I mean, she knows, she knows the deal. She knows how to do this stuff, you know? So like, and she's humble about it. And it's, you know, so... But I think sometimes when you don't have that, there's been, like, periods of my life when I didn't have that kind of, like, guide, guide ship, you know, that I felt like I didn't know how to help somebody else. And I think, like, my first sponsor, I don't think that he had somebody guiding him very well to sponsor others. I, 
I, he just didn't like he didn't get he didn't say we're gonna do this or we're gonna do that. It was just basically like I went to meetings with him and I needed something more. So anyway, this has gotten to be a long story. We um this Wednesday night meeting that I went to, um I was sitting there one night and the topic that came up was balance. And it's going around and it comes to me and I'm at the time, you know, like five, six months sober. And I'm like, I don't know how sober I was. But anyway, I was like, oh, I have like, I do a really good job of balancing my life. I always thought I sounded so good, you know. I was like, I do a really good, I don't do that anymore. I tell them myself and I tell where I'm at. And don't waste, don't waste your time and other people's time in meetings trying to sound good. It's pointless. Share where you're at. If you're a mess, share that you're a mess. You know what I mean? It's That's what you're there for. And it took me a long time to learn that. But anyway, um, and I think, well, anyway, I always think that authenticity and, and a, a, a place of genuineness is a better place to start from anyway because I think people relate to that. And so in kind, you'll get back. People will want to help you and they'll want to give you suggestions or feedback or, you know, I mean, it's not group therapy, but when they share their experience, strength and hope, they're going to share from a point of authenticity as well. So anyway, um, so I was like, oh yeah, like I, I do a really good job of like balancing my life between like this and that and whatever, you know, I started first, I just started working like the first job I had ever had in my entire life that was, you know, legal. <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, like I would do a really good job of balancing work in my personal life. I had no idea what I was talking about. And so it came to him, I can see him sitting there and, um, he was kind of real goofy looking, which I think was part of he kind of looked, reminded me a little bit of like a stand-up comedian or something. He was real funny. And he was always like, he wasn't self-deprecating, but he would take like situations of his own. Like he would share in a, in a really humorous way. And uh, I think sometimes the funniest people are the saddest people though, honestly. And I think that was the case with him. And um, so anyway, it came to him and he said, um, yeah, like, I don't have any balance in my life whatsoever, and I wish I did, you know? I wish I could balance out my, um, my kids and my work and my wife and recovery and everything, but I don't do a good job of it at all. And I remember just sitting there and just being, like, blown away at his honesty. I, like, never heard anybody so honest in my life. And I was, like, so attracted to that honesty. I was like, God, how do you get there, you know? And so... I like immediately asked, I think I asked his wife first. I don't remember, but anyway, he became my sponsor. And he saved my life. He absolutely saved my life. I would not be here today if it wasn't for that man. Um, he called me on my crap. He allowed me to walk right into traps, like getting into relationships and early sobriety. And he didn't tell me no. But he would ask me things like, have you had enough pain that you're willing to try it my way now? Um, when I called him sobbing after the third breakup that I went through, you know, in three months or six months of being sober, he was like, are you willing to try it my way now? And, um, you know, when I missed a meeting, he wasn't <laughs> asked about it. Like if I didn't go to a meeting, he'd say, well, what did you do instead of going to a meeting? And if I said, well, I wanted to watch this show or hang out with my friend and I mean, he'd just be real sarcastic, you know? And he'd say, yeah, it's probably more important than getting to a meeting. I mean, definitely that show is more important than drinking back in the day. You know, you wouldn't have, <laughs> you wouldn't have uh, missed that show to drink. And I'd just be like, oh my God. You know, he was so good. And then like, I can remember when it was coming up on doing my, having to do my fifth step. And that was where going over your fourth step with you. And your fourth step is where you make a searching and fearless moral inventory. And I've talked a lot about it on here, but it's where you make a list of resentments. You make a list of fears. You make a list of your conduct. And then you go over that with your sponsor. And there's really a lot more to it than that. It's like these columns that you do. And it's basically getting out of the lie of how we look at the world. So like in the first part of resentment, you make a list of who or what you're resentful at because it can be an organization or a time period. It can be anything, right? But typically it's people. And then you 
write down what you're resentful at them for, how they've affected your life, what areas of your life have they affected. Have they affected your pocketbook, your ego, your romantic and sex relationships? Have they affected your family relationships? Have they affected your you know, ability to be humble? What areas of your life have they affected? And you go through all this. And then the fourth part that you look at is what is my part in that? And that's typically what you do mostly on your fifth step. And then you go through that. And on a fifth step, you take a look at the patterns. So like on resentments, you take a look at what is my pattern in how I uh, behave compared to the rest of the world? Like, are there patterns that I have with people that I'm angry at or resentful at? In my fears, like one of the things that came out recently with my fears, because my sponsor is so good at doing this stuff, she was like, how are you managing your fears? And so like for each fear that I had, whether that was sharks, fear of flying, fear of financial insecurity, or, you know, fear of, like, I had fear of doing a fourth step on there, because I had read this on this list, because she gave me this list of all these fears, right? And I just wrote down each one that, like, applied to me. So she would say to me, like, how are you managing this fear? And what I found out was that the way that I manage fears is that I push them down. I shove them down, and I just don't deal with them, right? Well, like, that hasn't worked for me. That hasn't been successful for me. Um, and so it was like looking, it's hard not to look at that stuff on paper, you know? And so he had over a period of months said to me like about this fifth step. Um, we didn't really get to work on working steps in prob till probably that fall. So it was like, Thanksgiving, Christmas time, I was late doing my steps. Like, I didn't rush into doing my steps. And I can't remember the first time that he set a date. I think I did, like, with my first sponsor, I think we did do a fourth and a fifth step. I just didn't really get a lot out of it, I don't think. I don't remember. I'm pretty positive I did a fourth and a fifth with him, though. But anyway, because most sponsors have you do a fourth and a fifth with them. So... Well, most sponsors, if they're good, will have you start over at step one and work the steps with them so that you're working it with them. Um, but I, well, that's how, what I have found with people that have sponsored me. So I should just say from my experience, strength and hope, I have found that I get more from the sponsor that makes me work the steps over fresh and new with them. So anyway, um, I kept on putting it off. And so finally he set a date and it was like when college was out, it was like the week before Christmas or something. And I remember he said to me, we're gonna either, I can't remember what the date is, but usually sponsors will say like, okay, I'm giving you two weeks to do this four step and then we're gonna meet that, like on that, are you available that Saturday? Yes, we're doing it that day. And, um, so I kept on giving him excuses and he was really tired of it. And he said, okay, here's the deal. He said, we're doing the fifth step this day. And, uh, either you do your fifth step that day or you find another sponsor cause I'm done. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so he wants to be like that with me. All right. Cause see, I still had a lot of arrogance, ego and pride. I did, you know, I thought, well, okay. So he thinks it's okay to talk to me that way. All right. Uh, but you know, I had that this stuff, I had that four step done. It was all in code because I was I thought I was so important and so unique that if anybody got a hold of my four step, they'd shout it to the world. <laughs> I really did. I thought, oh my God, somebody's gonna tell everybody what I did. You know, I wrote it all in code. But I went to his house, did my four step with him. I went to his house, I meant. I say my house. I went to his house, did the fifth, fourth and fifth with him, did, or did the fifth with step with him where we go over it. And uh, I remember the whole time the kids were running around upstairs. Oh, so he adopted my friend, my coworker's daughter. He adopted her. And what I wanted to share about her that was really cool was that she had been born sober and they had a very, very sober family environment. And I mean, they had kind of rules written around the fact that like if one of you if one of them would go back out then that person had to leave kind of thing they were just like a recovery family everything about their life was recovery and so her daughter for every birthday would get a sobriety token because like 
her, like, she was born sober. I just always thought that was the coolest thing. I don't know, other people might feel differently, but I always thought that was a cool thing. So, like, for each birthday, like, her sixth birthday, she got, like, you know. But I can remember, well, I remember seeing her at, like, her 12th birthday. So, I must have seen her for several years after that. But they ended up breaking up, and, because he couldn't stay sober. And, um... I'll never forget it. I got a call one day. And I was like, this, who is this? I don't know what this number is. And, um, I hadn't talked to her in years, you know? I said my uh, old sponsor's name, and at first, I felt okay saying it because he's gone, but I think probably just. <laughs> Respecting his anonymity, I shouldn't. So anyway, I just told this part, but I keep on having to stop the video tonight. I um, I don't even know how long ago it was. I don't even remember. But I got this call on my phone, and I like looked at the phone number, and I was like, I don't know who this is, and um. She and I actually worked together for a long time. Not just at the same place, but then she left there and we like used each other for referral sources and stuff. But I hadn't talked to her and I don't know, it'd been like at that point, like it had been a while, like five, six, seven years. And um, so I picked up the phone and I was like, hello. And it was her and she was like, hey, how are you? It's like, I can feel like that phone call was just like yesterday. And, um, I was like, I said her name and I was like, I'm good. I was like, how are you doing? And she was like, good. And she was like, you know, she was like, your name came up the other day. And she was like, you know, I realized that I never called you. Um, and I said, called me, called me about what? And she said, um, well, she said, I wanted to let you know that he had passed away several months ago from a heroin overdose. You know, and at this point, I'm like, I feel like it was like right when I met Alex. So at this point, I would have been like 14 years sober or something, you know? And I was like, blown away. And she was like, yeah, she was like, I, I totally forgot calling you. And she was like, I mean, it had been, you know, 14 years. And he sponsored me up until my, I think it was my second or fourth, I think it was my fourth birthday. So I mean, I hadn't seen him in 10 years and he had gone back out then, he was back out then and came back in and went back out. So, I mean, I had completely lost track of him. And, um, couldn't believe it. And, um, so she and I talked and, okay, so if her daughter would have been four or five, because at that point I feel like her daughter was in high school and it would have been like 10 years, she would be, yeah, that would have been right. So her daughter would have been in high school, which means now she'd be close to 30. Um, there's a deer down there in the woods. God, all the animals are out tonight. Is this Harry Potter? My Lord. Um, do you know, and I just first, I could not wrap my head around the fact that the man who laid the foundation for my sobriety and taught me everything that I knew about staying sober was gone. Like, I just couldn't wrap my head around it. I just was like, I can't. Like, how is this? I don't even get it. Like, why could he not get it himself, you know? And the really weird thing about it is that when you talk about the founders of a certain 12-step program, like, that's a very similar story um, to the founder. And, and I was like, this must happen all the time, you know? I mean... Today, 
I, I have known, like, so many people that have lots of sobriety, you know, that end up going back out and they can't, they, you know, they can't keep for themselves what they've given to others, but it makes me sad. It breaks my heart. Um. Maria's Mexican Grill. That little place looks cute. <laughs> you know, it was so sad because I went to this, that Wednesday night meeting that I went to, I loved, I loved that meeting. We'd all sit around this table and there was like 10 of us and then they would, you know, bring in the patients and stuff like that from Charter Hospital. They stopped doing that after a while, but... But, like, before I stopped going to the meeting, it was, like, I remember there was, like, two different couples that would come to that meeting. And one week, it was, like, the husband went back, the wife went back out, and the husband came, and he shared what had happened. And then he didn't come back the next week. And it was, like, each week, like, somebody didn't come. And then my sponsor had told me that he was gonna come and he was gonna bring me a cake and a really special coin for my fourth birthday. It was my fourth birthday, um, not my second. So I showed up. I'm like really checking, like was it my second or my fourth? I would have to go back and look at my coins. I feel like it was my fourth, but I'm like, did he sponsor me that long? Maybe it was my third. I don't know. But, like, that means he would have sponsored me for, like, three and a half years. And I just don't feel like he sponsored me that long. I feel like it was more like a year and a half, two years. I don't know. Maybe it was my third birthday. But. Like, I had tried to get a hold of him. I think they were separated by then. So she didn't know what was going on. And he wasn't responding and I remember I showed up and he never showed up. And I was the only one at the meeting. And I announced the meeting. I went through like, you know, does anybody have, I said it out loud, like there's just me sitting in a room and I said, does anybody have 30 days, 60 days, 90? I mean, I look back on that and it's like so ridiculous to me and like, All those lonely moments I've had in my life, growing up, all of that, you know, and there I am sitting in a meeting by myself. I should have just not even started it, probably. I should have gone to some other meeting and gotten a token, but I didn't. I wasn't that involved at that time. I didn't know that many other people. And so, I went through all, you know, 60 days, 90 days, six months, nine months, a year. So when it came to like multiples of years, I said, I'm Peter, <laughs> you know, and took my token out and then I said does anybody have any burning desires and I closed the meeting and I remember when I left because we like we like opened the meeting and then that's where they brought the patients in but they had long stopped bringing the patients into the meeting I don't know why and like everybody had gone back out everybody from the meeting all 10 people had gone back out it was just me left and um so I looked at the receptionist because she would give us like this binder when we came in that had like the coins and like all the stuff to start a meeting in it and whatever. And I looked at her and I said, um, I, I, I didn't know then what I know now. What I know t today is that this is not what you do. And even though I was early in sobriety, I would have at least found somebody that could have walked me through that those steps on what to do or how to get that meeting attention or whatever. It didn't really matter because Charter Hospital closed down about six months later. I think that's why, anyway. So there was, that meeting wouldn't have ex existed there anymore anyway, but I just handed the, the binder to her. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do, you know? Like, I just wasn't... I was such a follower the first couple years in sobriety that, I mean, I didn't do it. Like, if my sponsor did something, I did it. If he told me to do something, I did it, you know? And so, I handed her the binder and I said, um, I won't be coming back, so you'll need to have somebody else do the meeting or close it down, I guess. She was like, okay. She looked like she could care less, you know? I was so upset about that. And then, that was when I'd already met Tanya. 
and I had been going to my Tuesday night meeting, and that was when I made my Tuesday night meeting my home group, because that had been my home group. So that would be, I would have been sober three years, I think. I'll tell the story again, and I'll, I'll say I was four years or two years or whatever, because I always got, it's been too long, I don't know. Um, but that was where I met my next sponsor. So how did I get to that today? I was talking about what I did today. Gosh, that was an hour long road I went down, wasn't it? The radio station right now is playing Odessa above the middle. I'm not a huge Odessa fan. I'm not a huge Odessa, Odessa, Odessa? I don't even know, I think it's Odessa fan. But I know so many people that love them. I think Alex likes some of their stuff. This friend of mine, her son, really, really likes them. In fact, I just told Tanya that the other day. I was like, oh, so-and-so's son really loves them. I'm not a huge fan. I feel like a lot of the people that really like them are a lot younger. So maybe they're a... I don't know. I'm sure I'll say that and somebody, 80-year-old, will say, oh, I love Odessa. Music's for any age, right? Um, I just don't know a lot of their stuff. But anyway... So, yeah, so did uh, my review video, came home, I was listening to my audiobook while I was driving around, so then, I, since I was dri listening to my audiobook, I was like, well, I kind of really want to finish it, even though I just started it, and it's real short, you guys, it's less than three hours long, and I'm at the two hour mark now, so I was like, I didn't know that I was going to, like, if I was going to film any other videos, because there was like, I was going to watch this, like, Gabby Hanna music video, and then maybe do a reaction to it, but I was going to see if there was anything else going on. So I thought, well, I'll film the, film the video. I was in a mood to film videos. So I feel like I just, like, am bleeding right here or something. I don't know why. Like, I had a, a pimple or something, and it's bleeding. But, um... So, yeah, I came home and I filmed that video, and then... Alex was home already when I got home, and he had fed the dogs. He got home early today. He's been getting home really early on Fridays. And, um, so he's, like, completely switched up his schedule, which is nice. And, um, not having to work as late and things like that. So, so yeah, and so then I filmed my drama video. Well, he ate, he was like, can I, he was, like, heating up this, uh, his P.F. Chang's from the other night, and so he was watching something on TV, I don't know what he was watching, and I was, like, watching her music video and this other stuff, and so anyway, I, I was, like, he got, uh, like, got done eating, and I said, like, what time are you leaving? He was, like, seven, so we hung out and talked for a little bit, and then I, well, first I filmed that in my Peterisms video, and then the meditations on Peterisms today were, like, I really needed to hear those, um, I don't remember what they are at this moment, but I just know that I really needed to hear them at the time. Okay, the battery is flashing at me. I'm gonna keep on driving for a second because there's nowhere to turn in right here. Um, but anyway, so I got was getting those videos up and then I hung out with him for a little bit and then he left, I think like 7.30, something like that, 7, 7.30. And then I got all the videos up and I called and talked to Tanya and asked her if she wanted to get a fountain pop later and she said maybe, but it was kind of like rainy and wet and she, I kind of got the impression she didn't really want to leave and go anywhere, so I wasn't going to push it. So I had just watched, I don't think I talked about this on here, um, Dragula. So I downloaded the Shutter app just so I can watch Dragula. I don't know that I think the Shutter app is really that worth it. It was this huge mess today, you guys, because then it said you could get Shutter through AMC Plus and all this mess of stuff. And I was like, then I went in and I, I don't know. So anyway. But, needless to say, <laughs> I have Shudder now, okay, with a list of other things. And, here, let me um, go in here. Just pull into this little area right here. <gasps> Where's my battery? My other battery. Oh, shoot. No, I know I grabbed another battery. I know I did. Here it is. 
I was like, don't do this to me. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, what was I gonna say? So anyway, I had watched, oh yeah, so I had watched the first episode of Dragula season four, which if you don't know what Dragula is, it is like, did I talk about this the other night? It's like RuPaul's Drag Race, but it's Spooky Queens. And I've been really excited about this season coming out. The first episode came out on October 19th, so I just watched that the other night eating dinner. Well, while I was like downloading all of this stuff, I would actually seen this before, but I didn't remember it. I was seeing this ad, am I like bleeding? I feel like I'm bleeding, but I'm not, I guess. <laughs> I had seen this ad for, it's called Dragula Resurrection. So last night while I was eating my dinner, I was sitting at the computer and I was just like, was it last night or the night before? I think it was last night, I watched Dragula. So, I don't know which night it was, but one of the nights I watched Dragula while I was sitting there in front of my computer eating. So tonight, I like was like, got my food ready and then I was like sitting there in front of the computer and I was watching this show called Dragula, Dragula by the Boulay Brothers. Um, who are like this couple that like are drag duo and they, I did talk about this cause I talked about how they started and they started it as like a competition, like a, in real life competition, which it still is. But anyway, this competition also offers a hundred thousand dollars and, um, so they have a new show out called Dragula Resurrection. And it's from the last, it's two contestants from each season, from season one, season two, and season three. And the winner gets to be on season four. So if you're already watching season four, you'll know who won Resurrection, cause like I did. But as soon as they announced it, I was like, oh, that's, that's how they're on uh, season four. They didn't say how they were on season four. So anyway, they're just like, I'm back from season, you know, whatever. So anyway, I started watching that tonight, and it's good. There's just always, like, the, and I know I'm, like, the last person that should be saying this, but, like, the intro is so long to their stuff. Like, they do these, like, little, like, cutesy, cutesy movie things that are supposed to be, like, horror movies, but it's always, like, a 10-minute, like, lead-in to, like, the actual show, and I'm like, can we just get to the competition part? So, but, um, I know, because I always have the long intros and outros and stuff, but... Yeah, I watched that tonight, and then when I got done with that, I called Tanya back to, or is that when I called her? I feel like I took the dogs outside, and I called Tanya and asked her if she, well, that was when I asked her if she wanted to get a fountain pop, and I said I was going to lay down for a little bit, and then I went upstairs, and I snuggled with the dogs, and Tucker was being so sweet tonight. He's always so sweet, but tonight, it's like, it's like he's gotten real, real close to us the last couple days. I think maybe he's just like reading into the fact that, you know, we're super emotional about this and we're holding him more and stuff because he's like super like physically attention needy and Boo Radley kind of has been too. I don't know what it is, but they've just been just so sweet the last couple days. I love them so much. So yeah, that was my day today. And then tomorrow, I don't really have anything exciting tomorrow. To, welcome to my exciting life. Um, I don't really have anything exciting tomorrow either. I have, I'm gonna make videos and <laughs> surprise, and probably listen to the, if I don't finish this book, but I'm planning on finishing this book tonight, um, and then starting another one tomorrow. And then I'm trying to get as many books as I can get read in October, because I'm reading all these scary books. Oh, I know something that I did today. I uh, texted Mel about this, because I was so, Mel and I were texting today. I was so proud about this. I updated my book series list. So if you don't know, I have a, a list that I keep on my computer. Remember I talked about this? Well, I'm up to, I think, like 28 or 29 book series that I either have started or there's like three in there that I have the first book, like on my Audible, but I haven't listened to it yet. So I have decided, other than uh, a True Crime Book Club's book for November, which is uh, The Murder of a Drag Queen, A True Crime Murder of a Drag Queen in Louisville, Kentucky. It's called Glitter in a Dark, uh, I think it's called Glitter in a Dark Room by David Domine. I did it, on, I talked about it on my booktube video today. I, I'm very excited about this book. I'm really, I, I hope it's good. 
I hope it's good because this was my suggestion. And then Peter's book club pick is uh, Apples May Fall by Leanne Moyarity because Tanya said it was fantastic. And I love Leanne Moyarity. I read Big Little Lies and that I was going to read all of her stuff and I never did. So this will be my second. Well, I got like 100 pages into Secret Husband and then I did The Secret the husband's secret, and then I didn't read anymore. So maybe after this, I'll like read all her stuff. I don't know, but um, I, other than that, for the month of November, I'm reading all cozies, and I'm not even making any excuses about it. <laughs> I'm reading all cozies this month. I have read so many kind of like dark, suspenseful, scary things, which has been really fun because it's Halloween month, but like, I'm gonna need a break. So, the new uh, series that I added to my list, that I have, like, the books on my Audible, are... One is called the Library Murder Series. It takes place in Indiana. The other one is called uh, an Amish Farm Murder Series. It's about this woman that owns a coffee shop, and she hires this woman from this Amish community to work for her. And then these murders start happening. And that, I think, place, takes place in Indiana, too. I think that's how I got the idea for those. So those are those two. And then the third one that I downloaded today, I'm really excited. I just, like, put in... I can't remember... What, oh, I was Googling, to, or I was ser ser searching on Audible. Search, search, searching. I was searching on Audible to see when Jacqueline Frost's uh, The Christmas Tree murder series comes out. Christmas Tree Farm Murder, because I love those so much. The third book comes out this year. It comes out, well, I already pre-ordered it. I think it comes out at the end of this month or next month. So, I was looking to see when it comes out, and when I was looking it up, um, this series came out that has like 20 books, and it's about this woman, and like, her husband dies, and so she buys this camper and goes, like, all over the United States and everywhere she... It's, like, called Camper on Criminals and Campers or something like that. And I was like, this is so cute. This is such a cute idea. So, I bought the first one of that, and I put that on my series list. And then the Joanne... Joanna or Joanne Fluke ones... Um, I can't remember what they're called. Hannah Swenson, I think. And they're really famous. They're, like, when... When you look up lists of like, do you guys see how excited I get talking about these damn cozies? Um, but when you look up like the best cozy mystery series, it's like one of the first ones to be listed. And the first book is called The Chocolate Chip Cookie Murder. And I think they take place in Minnesota. So I'm really excited about that. And that's about a woman that owns like a bakery, I think. So those are some new ones that I'm starting. And of course then, you know, I have 28 other series, 27 other series that I can pick from to read from, but that will be in the month of November. I'm very excited. And by December, hopefully, the new Fortune, um, Misfortune book will be out because it's already out, but the Audible isn't out yet. And then in December, I'll be reading Christmas stuff, you know. But I gotta make a list of Christmas cozies that I wanna read, because I'm gonna read a lot of Christmas cozies. There are a lot of Christmas cozies. There are tons and tons and tons of Christmas cozies, so that shouldn't be hard. I actually didn't even read one Halloween cozy. I can't believe it. Maybe I'll have to look that up and see like the best Halloween cozy ever. But it won't be like book one in a series, which is the problem, unless it is. Unless I can find a Halloween cozy. If I can find one, then I will read a Halloween cozy this week. Because I really want to do that. I was going to read Salem's Lot, but I think that I'm going to try to get a couple of these other books done instead. Maybe I will. We'll see. I don't know. Um, if it's like Wednesday and I finish like two or three more books, I'm, uh, I'm like reading like, I'm like listening to like a book a day right now. So um, I'm really into listening to audiobooks right now. So who knows? If I get two or three more done, then before Wednesday, I might download Salem's Lot and listen to that for the end of the week. I don't know. We'll see. So, anyway, or if I find a couple cozies, I might listen to a couple cozies instead. <laughs> I love cozies. Anyway, I said something to my neighbor across the street about reading the Maddie Day cozies, and she was like, oh, no, I didn't buy the next one or something because she said something about the cost of it. And I was like, well, I didn't understand. But anyway, um, maybe she couldn't find it. Or I thought she said something about, I don't know what she said. But anyway, she hadn't read it yet. So I don't know if she's read like all of them, but, or just read the first one. But I loved the first one and I love, I read the first one, the second one. 
um, the Maddie Day series that takes place in southern Indiana. It's really good. The first one's called Flipped for Murder, and the second one's called Grilled for Murder. Oh, it's a country store murders, a murder series. I love them. Anyway, speaking of that, I'm going to get off here now so that I can listen to my book, so I can finish this book up, which I don't necessarily love. Autograph, uh, Queen Sessie is on Smells Like Teen Spirit, is not my favorite remix or remake, but whatever, is on is on the radio right now, but I'm going to uh, listen to this book so I can get into this book and finish it so I can go on to the next one because that's my life books. I love books. Anyway, that's why my channel is called Peter Likes Books. I would have picked Peter Loves Books, but Peter Loves Books was taken, so I couldn't have that on all social media across the board, so instead I picked Peter Likes Books. <laughs> now you know the secret. Now you know the inside secret, I, which I already shared on my booktube channel many times. Anyway, anyway, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you don't ever point at anybody but I will because I love you and um, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Saturday and a, just a mad a majestic weekend I hope you're getting lots of rest and relaxation and enjoying yourselves if you have to work I hope it goes quickly and I hope it's enjoyable and you're having fun and I love you guys so much and I'll see you tomorrow bye love ya and for those that want to hear it and need to hear it and for those that just happen to stick around one more I love you. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya.